You've probably heard by now that Lightroom has come out with a major update. Now, I wouldn't say that the update overall was like a major overhaul, but there has been something added that has been greatly, greatly desired and needed in Lightroom, and that is a really good removal tool. And now they've added generative fill. But they've also added some really cool other things. So we're gonna go over a brief explanation of everything so you can use Lightroom confidently. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, my name is Will. If you're a subscriber, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, welcome to it. Today, as I just mentioned, we are going to be going over a brief explanation of everything that Lightroom updated. And there's some cool features that you may or may not know about, even if you saw the updates. So first things first, let's look at what they did. So they added generative remove, which is greatly, greatly needed. And I've done some tests on it. It's fantastic, just like it is in Photoshop. Tethered capture support with for Sony cameras. Now this is something Lightroom has lacked. Uh, let's say Capture One has pretty much had the, the hold on this. So this ad is awesome. Lens blur enhancements, also really good. It's a kind of a slow thing, but they added something which is really, really cool. And I will show you that too. Adaptive presets to blur background. That's what I'm talking about. I'll show you soon. Uh, filter by exported images. This, I mean, it's okay. It's another way to filter your photos. I'll show you how that works. Performance updates, yeah, no one cares. It works better, great. Uh, improved cloud sync reliability, again, great, works better, love it. Updated Canon tether capture to support new camera models, fantastic. And this update includes bug fixes and new lease, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, that's what they updated. So let's get into how this works. So the first one we're actually gonna go through is generative fill. Now, this is a cool image that I took and I'm going to really put it to the test here. So first, if you go over here, your remove tool or you can press Q on the keyboard to open it up. Now you still have the remove tool. The remove tool is the same. You still have your healing brush and your stamp tool. So you have these tools still, but the add-on is the generative AI. Now this is early access, so they are still testing it out, which allows you to test it out and give feedback, which is cool. Okay, so if I use the remove tool like normal without selecting the generative AI, right? I'm just gonna select our guy here that was in frame and I am going to remove him. Most of the times this is not good enough and I have to go into Photoshop to handle this. So for example, you see the red here and we can refresh that and get another sampling. We can try lots of different things, but generally the remove tool is good for small things. Yeah, so that's not working. So let's delete that. What we're gonna to do to use generative AI is select generative AI, obviously, and we're going to paint it on over our subject. Now what it's gonna do is it's going to give you a green mask. Now you can change that color by clicking this little box and you can select whatever color you want. I use green, like a lime green, because it seems to pop off when I'm doing my masking but you choose whatever color your heart desires. Now this here adjusts your brush size, or I have one of those mouses that has a touch mouse so I can scroll up and down, or you can use the brackets. Nothing fancy, that's that. Add, I can add to the generative fill. Subtract, I can subtract from the generative fill. Pretty self-explanatory. However, in order to apply it, you actually have to click apply. Go figure. So let's press apply here. Now my internet is very, very slow right now. You do need internet to use generative fill, fill AI because it, it works through Firefly, so it needs an internet connection. So I'm going to speed this up because it's just gonna take too long. So here we go, and we're done. So check this out. This is amazing. So here's the before, here's the after. I mean, that is so good. It's so good. Now. There's a couple of things you can do here to make some more adjustments. You can adjust the size brush, which I don't know, fine if you wanted to paint more. You can actually adjust the opacity. So I have this one selected. I can adjust the opacity to l bring him back. Now, I don't know exactly why you would wanna do that, but that is an option, so that's cool. You can also refresh it. So if you didn't like this outcome, you can click refresh and you can create a new generation. You also have your variations. So you notice one to three. So here's one, there's two, and there's three. So three probably looks the worst of all of them. This one doesn't look so bad, but the tree line here doesn't really match this tree line. 
I really think number one works the best, so we'll just leave it at one. Now, you can adjust certain things like your tool overlay, so it's showing auto, meaning when I have it over here, it's showing, always, selected, never. If you're familiar with the masking options, this is those. Visualize spots. Now, this is the one that I don't understand. It says show or hide the spot visualization. So it just gives you a black and white thing. Like, and you can adjust, hang on, let me just see this. Okay, so you can't really adjust that. So I, white reveals, black conceals, right? Okay, so to be determined. I'm not exactly sure what that is. So if you know, let me know in the comments because I'm not sure, I think it, I don't know. Let's be real. Okay, good. And then you can provide feedback on your generative move. You can click here, you can submit a form and help them grow this tool. And that is generative fill. This is so good. It is really, really nice to have this feature. And despite my internet speed, it's actually a lot faster than it looks. So that's really, really nice. Now, I wouldn't get overly crazy with using it because if you don't need it, don't bother using it. Just use the remove tool, like little specs and stuff that it can easily be removed. But for harder things, generative fill, yes. Thank you, sir. May I have another? That is fantastic. So the next thing that they tweaked and kind of fluffed up a little is the lens blur. Now this has always been one that I have used sparingly because it's been so slow. Now it hasn't really sped up too much, but they did add a great feature, which I like a lot, is the ability to add a preset to it. So let's go ahead and add a lens blur to this photo. So I'm gonna press apply. Now again, like I said, it takes a little time. So that is one thing that I don't really like, but they did update it so it's a little bit better in selecting your subject and background and all of that. So that's kind of nice. Okay, good, so this is applied. Now we're gonna boost this a little bit. We're gonna blur it a little bit more just so we can actually really see it. I was using a 3.2 f-stop here and it was background so it was kind of blurry already. But let's see, so here is the before. Here is the after. Now that looks pretty good, but I kind of want to blur over here. So, right, so let's add some. So we'll go down here to blur. We're gonna brush there, and then we're just going to create a brush. Let's go ahead and visualize the depth. And we're gonna, oh, it's it's got it there. Okay, we're gonna just add more to it. And we're just gonna brush here. Okay, good. Just add it a little bit better. All right. Unvisualized, perfect, there we go. Good, so here is our before. That's not before. Here is our, here we go, drum roll please, before, after. Looks a little bit better, works better for this photo. All right, so here is the cool part. And actually, it did seem a little bit faster, so that's, that's nice. But here's what I like. If you press Command or Control C to copy your settings, you'll notice that this is now available, lens blur, so you can batch edit with the lens blur. Before you could not do this, so this is a nice addition. Another thing that I really like, come up here to develop, go to new preset, select check none, and then click lens blur, and then just preset name, lens blur. Now you can create presets that add your settings, your lens blur to multiple photos. So it quickens up your speed. So rather than making all these adjustments, you get it right the first time, you save it as a preset, you apply it, boom, much faster editing. So that's really nice because now you can create a preset using lens blur, which again, wasn't available before. So good update. The next thing is the sort by exports and stuff, which is kind of weird. So if I go to the one stars and get all these photos here that we had, there's these two new buttons here in your toolbar. You got your flags, you got your stars, you got your uh, edits and non edits. So here you can now sort by photos that you've exported and photos that you haven't exported. So this one here, click it, exported files, one star or higher, because I have this, so let's uncheck the one star. So now it's showing me all the photos that I exported. Now if I unselect that and select this one, now it's showing me all the photos that I didn't export. So this is, I don't know if I'd ever use this, but it's worth mentioning because it's something new. So the last thing, which is super exciting, and probably maybe not the first, because generative fill is obviously the first exciting one, but it's probably the second best, is tethering. Now before we get into this, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe because it's, I know you're having a good time right now with me. We're, we're, we're vibing. And go ahead and hit the bell because you don't wanna miss a video. Now, tethering, if you're not sure what that is, that's when you connect your camera up to your computer. So when you take a picture, it automatically uploads into Lightroom. It's great to show clients' works, uh, things like that. 
If you're not sure how to tether, I'll link a video somewhere up there. I did a whole video on how to connect your camera, all the setups and everything. But the important update here is you can now tether a lot of cameras. The one comment that I get the most actually in my tether video is, can you tether the R6 Mark II? And recently you couldn't. With this update, you can. So Adobe has an entire list and I'll link this, this list in the description so you can go check it out. But they have updated a ton of cameras, tons of Canon cameras and Nikon cameras and Sony cameras. Now there's not that many Sony cameras, but there are enough that you can probably tether is probably the most uh, popular ones. But there are some stipulations. So check out this document, read it out and make sure it's gonna work for your, your camera. But Lightroom Classic is catching up. It's not the best for tethering just yet, but it works. I use it all the time and absolutely love it. So that is, a, that is super exciting news for all the Canon users, Sony users, Nikon users out there for that specifically. But other than that, that wraps up kind of an overview of the major workable updates for Lightroom Classic. Now I do have a course that is a full Lightroom Classic editing course. It goes over all of this. I will be updating videos on Lightroom Classic on these things up there soon. But if you wanna check that course out, I will link it in the description as well. Whew. Okay, that was a lot of information. So hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, if you wanna keep watching the videos, YouTube recommends that video, I recommend that video, but that's all there is to it. I'll see you next week.